Hello, friends. It's Pastor Isaac here alongside... Pastor Tom. We are here at the Olathe West Side Church in Nazarene, and as we are getting through our Advent season here, we uh, wanted to talk about uh, our class good. I'm, I'm killing it right now. I'm doing great. Yeah, okay. it's totally okay. Yeah, We're we wanted restart. to talk about our class a little bit, and we recognize uh, the Advent kind of preparing for Christmas is a busy season, so sometimes it's hard to make it out to a Wednesday night, and so we thought maybe we'd put this together. Um, for the little podcast and share it with you all. So hopefully you enjoyed this and can listen to it as you're jogging or making your pumpkin pie or wrapping a Christmas present or whatever mm -hmm. fun thing you're doing. Or calling us to invite us over for pumpkin pie. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the big things that we talked about as we opened up our uh, class for parents about you know preparing for Advent, preparing for Christmas, is that our kids and our teens, they're being shaped to understand Christmas in a certain light. And we don't say that as a scare tactic necessarily. It's just it's just true, you know. Some of that shaping is on purpose and some of that is by accident. And so we, we kind of started thinking, okay, so what are the, some of the things that... Uh, that our kids are shaped to understand Christmas as. So what yeah, do you think? There, there's, just, there's a lot of things out there. One of the things that comes to mind immediately is just the consumerism of the holidays, um, going out and buying gifts and purchasing them and uh, going to the store. And uh, you buy things for Christmas, and then immediately on December 26th, you go back to Walmart, and what did they set up for? Valentine's Day. Boom. And Christmas is already over the day after Christmas. And we barely even uh, got into that, and so they're um, trying to sell some Valentine's Day things and those sorts of things. But that's the whole idea of um, more is better, and yeah. you know you have to buy a certain amount to feel good about the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. Just buying into that whole consumerism sort of thing. Yeah, I mean the, the questions we immediately ask after Christmas are, "What did you get for Christmas?" Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and 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 that's a that's a that's the that's the story that comes out of Christmas is what did you get for Christmas? I think another kind of going along with what you're saying there, Pastor Tom, is large gifts or big gifts equal love, right? Mm -hmm. So it quite frankly is not yeah. the thought that counts. Like anymore. if I bought you a new Corvette and you drove it to church on Sunday, you would feel loved by me. I would feel very loved by you. In fact, I won't feel loved if you don't do that. Yeah. So if you could do that for me. I wouldn't uh, feel loved at home, by the way, because I would be out of money. Actually, <laughs> you wouldn't, I wouldn't have, have a home. That's right. Yeah, you wouldn't <laughs> have a home about. anymore. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it's this idea that that it really isn't the thought that counts. We want a big, good, awesome, amazing gift, and that just becomes to become uh, uh, becomes the story that is told out of Christmas yeah. is uh, that, and and we don't feel good about ourselves unless we buy someone a big, amazing, yeah. awesome gift. And not that big, amazing, awesome gifts are not anything inherently bad about those sorts of things. But Corvettes, when, for instance. But when we yeah, but when we uh, solely put the value and worth of Christmas based on what we uh, get or um, get for someone, yeah. then we've kind of lost um, what the true meaning of Christmas is. Yeah, that brings me to another way that I think we're shaped. Um, and, and this is kind of uh, hot water, and I don't want to get into the argument piece of it. I want to kind of move past that. So so try and, try and run past the argument with me here. But often there's this argument about Christmas being you know, just, oh, it's, it's just this, uh, this day for our families. It's more of a holiday. And then some people are saying, no, Jesus is the real reason for the season. And I don't want to get back into the argument. And, and I don't think we need to be making sure, you know, everyone says Merry Christmas to us. Because if you're not a follower of Jesus, Christmas is very different than what it is for my family. And so I just simply want to say that what we're celebrating isn't necessarily what other people are celebrating. If they're not followers of Jesus, why would they be celebrating the birth of Jesus? They wouldn't. They're looking for an opportunity maybe for family time and gifts and trees. And this is a good, wonderful time to be together at the end of the year. And all those things are wonderful and great. But what we are celebrating is Christmas. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And so we can't really assume or expect, I guess is the right word. We can't expect other people to be celebrating what we're celebrating mm -hmm. if they're not followers of Jesus. We can, however, help our children, our teens to understand why we celebrate this season. Right, right. And another thing that we think about when you ask somebody usually around this time of year, 
hey, how, how are things going? How Are you enjoying the Christmas season? And simply, usually they'll respond by saying, oh, I'm just so busy. Yeah. Things are so hectic. I'm preparing for a meal for people to come over. I need to go purchase some gifts at the store. I need to... Um, you know, go to a Christmas play at school. Mm -hmm. All of these different things mm -hmm. are cluttering up our calendars. And honestly, sometimes we need to probably just pull out our calendar and say, are we doing too much mm -hmm. during this uh, season before preparing for Christmas? And sometimes we almost treat Christmas in terms of, man, I just can't wait till Christmas is over. Yeah. And I just, I don't think that that's kind of the the way that followers of Christ should enter into Advent or the Christmas season is just longing for it to be done because it's so busy and crazy and we don't get any time to reflect um, and connect with each other and also connect with, with the Lord um, during this Christmas season. And, and so it just becomes this busy, hectic time. But Advent reminds us to take a pause, you know, hit the pause button for a minute and reflect. And there was this time of silence leading up to Jesus's birth um, and what would it look like for us to just kind of slow down our time uh, during Advent and not unnecessarily do some things but but not just clutter it up to to where we're just panicking and and full of anxiety because we're just so busy yeah that, that's good that, that kind of leads us into what what is Advent so we've painted a lovely uh, depressing picture here of all the yeah. things we do wrong, right? So Advent, what what's happening here? So if we think about uh, the Bible, if we kind of go back to when Jesus was born, right before Jesus was born, if you flip the page one back, you see a blank page in your Bible. And often it says something like 400 years of silence or something like that. And so if we picture ourselves as, as the people of God pre-Jesus, who this promised Messiah, this Savior is going to come save them and, and fix the way that things are broken and messed up. And so the people are looking around and they're seeing how they're, some of them are in slavery or bondage to, to other rulers or to other religions and to other people. And, and some of them are just not living the way that God has created them to live. And so you can see prophets and, and other followers of God who are saying, come, Messiah, save us. Where are you? We need you. 400 years they've been doing this. And so they're proclaiming, they're crying out, uh, admitting their utter dependence on God. We need a Savior. Mm -hmm. And then as we look at ourselves, we look around and we see that we need Jesus, mm -hmm. right? We look around at the brokenness in our own lives and the lives of people around us and the things that are happening in our world. And we say, come Lord Jesus, where are you? We need a Savior. We need you to make this world the way you created it to be. And that's kind of the tension that we live in in Advent is we're, we're waiting for the second coming of Jesus while we're also preparing, waiting, anticipating, getting excited about the birth of Jesus who has already saved us, but we are not yet fully saved. Yeah, and some of us, I think, can identify that with that in our community. Um, maybe there's some relational brokenness or um, somebody's not around the table or maybe you're grieving this year uh, in the loss of a loved one. And one of the things that you're creating space for is crying out, God, where are you? Mm -hmm. It seems like you're far away. And in that, we have a biblical narrative that reminds us that you're not alone, that mm -hmm. there are people following God 400 years before um, Jesus was born, crying out for God and saying, God, where are you? Um, and so I think we can, one of the things that we can recover in Advent in this time is using it to ask that question. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that God loves for us to be is honest before the Lord. And so we can say, Lord, where are you? Um, and at the same time, one of the my favorite uh, simple prayers um, to teach and to, to say myself in this time of Advent, because Advent simply is just a fancy word that means coming, mm -hmm. where we remember Jesus' first coming and anticipating that, but then we also look forward to Jesus' second coming and how those are connected together. Um, but one of the things, one of the simple prayers to share together as a family during Advent is, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. You think of maybe some of the situations in the schools that your kids go to, and 
just simply taking time and pausing as a prayer as a family and praying come Lord Jesus into the halls of the school that I go to every day mm-hmm. or maybe your work environment is 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 a difficult one or maybe there's just some difficult days in your work and you need to just cry out to the Lord and say Lord come Lord Jesus into my workspace um, and not that we are somehow God isn't there if we don't do that Um because Jesus is always, the, the work of the Spirit is always there and goes before us. And so we're not just begging God to come. God is already there. But I think when we pray that prayer, it's opening us up to the awareness that God is present with us. And that's so good. That helps us. Yeah, that's good. And, and I mean, we can, we can pray that prayer, come Lord Jesus, because we recognize that in the birth of Jesus, God is now with us. As you right. said, God is among yeah. us. That's really good. Well, thinking about preparing and, and getting ready makes me think about um, our our own my own family. Julie and the boys went to see her uncle in Nashville uh, a couple a couple weeks a month or so ago, and um, before they left for days a week or two or so I don't know exactly how long we started to prepare them right. Mm-hmm. I mean Nashville's an eight hour trip, right. and so you kind of gotta psych them up a little bit for the trip because yeah. the trip's kind of long right and so take some preparation oh, yeah yeah so oh you're gonna get to watch some daniel tiger on the way you know mm. oh you can sleep in the van grandmother <laughs> and grandpa will be with you in the van you know and then we start talking about what's going to happen when they get there you know you can you can ride your bike around the cul-de-sac and no cars come down there and so you'll get to ride all around there and and you'll get to see uh, this person and this person and oh they're going to tickle you and so we started to prepare them for what they're going to see what they're going to experience so when they got there they already knew that uncle ted was going to be silly and mm-hmm. goofy and tease them and and give them hugs and they knew that that was his way of saying that he loved them wow. they knew this they knew they knew all these things and so they were ready they were prepared and so when they got there it meant more to them they knew why we were singing uncle mark you know he's um, he, he's not his health is not doing well we don't know how much longer he's going to be here and so they knew the significance of being there mm-hmm. to be with Uncle Mark mm-hmm. and when and when Julie was like no I want to go talk to Uncle Mark some more they understood why because that's why we were there mm-hmm. and I think it's the same it's the same for us as we kind of take a step back and say what what in the world are we doing spending an entire month getting ready for the birth of Jesus right well what we're doing is we're preparing well we're making sure that we understand why Jesus is coming and the huge significance that that plays for our everyday life. And so when we get to the birth of Jesus, we recognize what it means that God is actually with us, that our Savior mm-hmm. has come, mm-hmm. and all of those pieces. Yeah, which is, that's, that's, so, that's so key to remember that in time of preparation and, and adding to that experience. Um, one of the things that we just want to encourage you is to think about uh, what are some things you're already doing? Maybe there's some things and practices that you're already practicing leading up to Christmas or even during the Christmas season or Epiphany if we get there uh, after Christmas. Um, What are some things that you're already doing and how can you make those moments to kind of talk about and grow in your faith? Um, And while you're thinking about those, we'll share a few of ours. Uh, Pastor Isaac, what are some of those things that you're already doing with your family that have been meaningful to meaningful practices to to add meaning to this time of year yeah i think uh one of the things that you do we all do at christmas time we're shopping for other people right and and i think one of the things we're doing this year is we've invited our boys to help us to shop for some other kid for another child who doesn't get a gift and so that's a great opportunity for us to talk to our boys about how we are to care for those who don't have gifts and and we actually used a a movie that I'm going to reference later um, that we'll share some resources here at the end and we use that movie to help the boys begin to think about other children who don't have gifts or other people who don't have money and won't have a chance to get new clothes or a, a new toy for even for instance uh, at Christmas time and so shopping is a thing that we're gonna do and so we're encouraging our boys as we begin to shop to be thinking about other people shopping isn't just not about ooh, what are you gonna get me for Christmas it's how can I care for people around me mm. who who aren't as fortunate as I am I enjoy it I, I really like that and um, uh, a couple years ago um, we started this adoption journey with Aubrey and Lily mm. and 
Um, of course, one of the things that we love to do and we're trying to be better at is to include their birth mom in mm -hmm. just the times of the year, like Christmas and Thanksgiving and things like that. Um, and one of the things that we want to um, help Aubrey and Lily to, to kind of think about is or what, what's a way that we could give to to their mom. And so it, it doesn't just become about what what are people going to give me, but again, kind of like what you're saying is how can we become gener generous givers mm -hmm. like our Lord is? And of mm -hmm. course, God so loved the world that he gave Jesus to us. And that's the model in which we follow God. We follow Jesus. We become generous givers. Mm -hmm. And it talks about being... Um, it's more blessed to give than receive um, and, and creating that um, in us, especially as that time, this time of year. Uh, one of the other things I, I was thinking about in terms of, of Christmas and, and uh, practice is we have this, uh, this kind of uh, a little advent calendar. And every day there's like you, you kind of punch a little hole out. It's like a little uh, foil wrapper and you mm -hmm. punch it out and it's a piece of candy. And mm -hmm. obviously right now, let's just be honest, <laughs> Aubrey and Lily want it just because there's candy in it. And so every day they they are their memory is peaked because they know candy yes. is coming. And yes. it's, it's like a little piece of chocolate and and they are enjoying that. But as they're enjoying that chocolate, there is a part of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, and the message and of, of God, and so it's a time for us each day to kind of hone in on that um, using the vehicle of chocolate, which yeah. I think, if for chocolate lovers, it's a beautiful, right, right. beautiful thing. It's a, it's a sign of the kingdom of it God, is, right yeah, there. That yeah. is taste yeah. and see. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> one of the ones uh, that uh, someone, one of the parents mentioned in our first class for parents. Uh, tradition that they had at Christmas time was cooking together, and in many mm -hmm. families, that's a big deal, right? Uh, for for Julie's family, making the desserts. I mean, you know, her family's from the South, and so uh, dessert is a social event, right? And so <laughs> making desserts begins a week or so before, right? And preparing this and shopping for it, and and then there's the days and days of preparing food and and uh, making food and eating food and cleaning up from food and all those times we were talking about man what great relational opportunities opportunities to uh to do life together mm -hmm. we are created to be together and as we think about god being with us and caring for us and the the fact that, that god didn't simply create us and move on but is present with us that's what we get to do when we're baking together and cooking together and cleaning up together. We get to be in each other's space and caring for one another. Mm -hmm. And so those times can be not simply washing the dishes, but caring for one another. I remember uh, Julie's brothers really taught me this. Uh, he's always there to help clean up the dishes. And uh, so I've helped him many, many times uh, washing pots and pans. And, you know, one of us is washing, one of us is drying. And he says, so What's going on in your life, you mm -hmm. know? And, and we talk past, well, we talk a little bit sports and this and that, but he wants to know what's going on mm -hmm. uh, with Julie and I and how the boys are doing and, mm -hmm. and how stuff at the church is going. He, he deeply cares about the stuff of my life and shows me in those moments that, that we're not just cleaning up. We're not just preparing. We are, we are caring in a deep, deep, important way for one another. And, and that's a tradition many of us have. Which is so key. And I think um, one of the things, I'll just be confessional, and maybe some of us can relate to this. Uh, some of the things that um, keeps me from inviting my kids into the kitchen or having them help with a chore is that I can get it done faster. Absolutely. And I just want to get it done fast so I can move on to something more important. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, and, and sometimes you have to do that. You know, sometimes it's just the way the schedule lays. Sure. But what if we created a rhythm of what you're talking about is inviting our kids into the kitchen to cook with us, to, mm -hmm. to do chores with us. And in the midst of doing those things, not only are we creating a rhythm to care for the other people in our households, yeah. but we're creating space for conversation mm -hmm. and space for one another, to love each other, to ask questions, um, to share an experience. You know, when you drop a giant spoon on the floor and water spills out, it's mm -hmm. probably not a time to just get angry. It's just a time to laugh right? and yeah. a time to say, wow, that's a lot of water on the floor. That's right. That's uh, right. Let's make a slip and slide or something. Let's I don't know. call the professional. <laughs> yeah. No, that actually made me think of uh, going with my mom's side of the family at uh, Thanksgiving time. We'd be together and uh, we, we would 
it took a lot of people to clean up. I mean, there were a lot of us there and they had a nice big open kitchen area. And one of the things I remember uh, several times happening is the adults, my aunts and uncles, even my grandma at times, like they had fun in the kitchen, you know? And so we're cleaning up. It's supposed to be the the worst job ever, right? Mm-hmm. Cleaning up all the pots mm-hmm. and pans and, and, you know, getting the burnt stuff off the bottom because we left it on there too long. But constantly, someone would be turning around that sprayer and splashing somebody with a little bit of water, you know, or or rubbing a little batter on someone's face, you know, or, or whatever it was, you know, mm-hmm. just those ways that makes it fun. Because, I mean, I think about uh, kids and, and, and teens. And kids, sometimes, it's easy to get them helping because they want to mm-hmm. be helpers, and that makes them feel valued and those such things. I think sometimes for teens, they're, they're past that piece, you mm-hmm. know, and, and they don't necessarily want to oh, great, I get to be the one who, you know, (laughs) scrubs on the pan today. Mm -hmm. Yay, what a joy, what a gift you've Mm -hmm. given me, right? But that's a great opportunity for us to have some fun together and enjoy this journey of life. Which is uh, something that is a great segue into one of the questions, you know, as your teens or kids get older and they become teenagers and they kind of become a little bit more independent and not so much dependent as they were as children, one of the great things I think to do around Advent and Christmas time is to invite your teen um, into the conversation mm, of yeah. how do we create some of these traditions in our home, um, these practices. What are the things that you would like to practice to understand the reason for Advent and Christmas? Mm-hmm. And invite them into the process of yeah. discovering that and actually planning it and mm-hmm. being willing to kind of go with it. Yeah, you know, yeah. and go with kind of some of their ideas and see how it works. Um, after all, some of the ideas that I come up with, I, I people do them, and then I'm like, <laughs> "Wow, we I guess let's try something else." You yeah. know, yeah. And, and teens are the same way; they're learning and discovering just like we are learning and discovering. And so, allowing them times to even like you're not sure how that's going to go, that idea is going to go, but allow them to go with it because mm-hmm. it's in sometimes those those times where it doesn't all work out the way we imagined it in our head that. God really works, and our relationship grows from that. So, that's that's really good. Uh, we've kind of been dancing around this topic, so let's just dive into it. And for if you a couple could see minutes. us on video, we're literally dancing. We're around. literally yeah. dancing yeah, as much you, as we can in a circle, though. Yes, a chair that swivels around. That's right. But it is a one foot is on the floor at all times. Mm-hmm. So this is Nazarene dancing. It's okay. Yeah. We're we're good with that. Credentials yeah. are credentialed. Intact. Yeah, credentialed dancing. I think is actually. <laughs> the term that we use around here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, we've been dancing around this topic of <laughs> Jesus coming into our neighborhood, God with us, right? And uh, and so we kind of wanted to dive into, well, what, what are the things that, that happen when God is with us? And then how do we, out of that, how do we respond? How do we practice these things? And mm-hmm. one of the things that, Pastor Tom, you brought up was vulnerability, yeah. um, that God, God is very vulnerable uh, in this uh, in this incarnation, in the coming. And so would you talk to us about that? And you think about, you know, one of the things that we think about um, at Christmas time not so often is vulnerability. Like what do we discover? Who who do we discover God is through Jesus? And mm. um, thinking about Jesus coming and trusting himself to, uh, as, as the scholars remind us, uh, literally two teenagers, you yeah. know, Mary, who was, you know, quite, the age of a teenager and Joseph who was young and they were very poor um, entrusting God's self into human hands Mm -hmm. as an infant who is completely at the mercy of an adult someone someone raising them feeding them caring for them clothing them Mm -hmm. Um, that God would put God's self in that position is is really mind blowing and really causes me to think about the generous vulnerability of God. Yeah. And if God has made Himself that vulnerable with us, then how do I, as a follower of Christ who made Christ who made Himself vulnerable to us, how do I make myself vulnerable to yeah. others in 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 healthy ways, in, healthy in ways, ways that absolutely. honor yeah. the Lord? How do I practice this? Or another question is like. How do we practice vulnerability at Christmas time? Mm-hmm. That's not a really big question on the top ten list yeah, of Christmas. Right, but right. Like, how do we how do we practice that? Yeah, I think. Um, but one of the things we had the opportunity to talk about was honesty. You mm-hmm. know, and, and recognizing that 
that we all make mistakes. And that's a way that we can be vulnerable uh, with our kids and our teens and, and our spouse and, and perhaps even uh, those who d- disagree politically at the Christmas table with us, right? Mm-hmm. When we perhaps mm-hmm. say something we shouldn't have said because mm-hmm. we care too much uh, or we care uh, a lot about this certain topic and, and we cross the boundary of the way that we should we should act as a follower of Jesus. But I think, uh, to me, that's a piece of the vulnerability is just being vulnerable enough to be honest uh, with those in our lives, those are, who we're close with, about the ways that we make mistakes and, and ask for forgiveness and and offer them the opportunity to uh, to hear that, that we make mistakes. And uh, to me, that's really important. Yeah. In addition to vulnerability, one of the things that, as we were talking about things that God shows us in Jesus and coming, and, and one of the things that you mentioned and reminded us was this idea of being inclusive. Yeah. So, yeah, talk to us a little bit about this, how, how God shows us what it's like to be inclusive yeah i mean you think about the people who came to the manger you know the people in the or even the people in the very beginning of the birth narrative right i mean uh first as as you said god has included uh perhaps not the highest and mightiest people uh in the world to birth his son right and then who's invited to the manger who's invited to worship baby jesus the shepherds are invited to be present at the beginning. Uh, later on, we read of the Magi. So we have the, the poorest and the lowest of the low and the shepherds who do the job that no one wants to do. And, and they're kind of potentially socially awkward because they're not around mm-hmm. people a whole lot. Mm-hmm. They, they tend to talk to, to, to sheep more than they do to people. And then you've got the rich and the powerful like the Magi, the people who uh, have the have the vacation time to go on this long trip to see Jesus, right? And and they've got the finances uh, to have gold and frankincense and myrrh as the gifts that they are bringing. You've got people from different cultures and different ethnicities, different socioeconomic backgrounds. And, and so before we even get to the rest of Jesus' life and the healings and Jesus welcoming Jews and Gentiles and sinners and all those, before you even get to that, you get Jesus... God inviting all these different people to be a part, a major player in the beginning of God's story. And, and so it, it makes us think, how do we be inclusive this time of year? And all the time, but, but how do we make that a focus? In one simple story that one of our uh, parents in, in our class talked about was uh, thinking about the folks in your extended family, maybe, yeah. that you know are difficult to be around you know you know the one that kind of triggers your buttons when you gather together at the holidays around the table or maybe somebody that has a completely opposite personality than you that just it's just it's a labor of love it's yeah. work to to be with them and in mm-hmm. community with them um and so maybe one of the things to think about in terms of being inclusive is who is it in your extended family that you'll be seeing this advent christmas holiday season um, that that you have to the work at it. Like l- loving them is an act of work, and, yeah. and yet worship to God. And so one of our parents mentioned that you know they just had a relative that um, was uh, that had had that kind of uh, kind of rubbed them that way. Mm-hmm. And, and so one of the things that they had to discover was how to learn how to love them yeah. in the midst of, of being in their home and and being connected. And and what a what a great opportunity yeah. to show the inclusiveness of God in those yeah. moments. Absolutely. That was, that was really cool. Hey, we need to wrap this up in the next couple of minutes here. We have, we have lots more um, thoughts uh, just, to, just to kind of show you some flavor, some things for you to talk about with your, uh, those close to you and your family. Uh, we talked about uh, God taking relational risks for the sake mm-hmm. of restoration, mm-hmm. you know, for the sake of making things right. Um, and, and so how do we do that? How do we take relational risks for the sake of restoration, not not just so that we can say we did, but for the sake of making things right, making mm-hmm. things whole, the mm-hmm. way that God created them mm-hmm. to be. And and sometimes we have to put ourselves out there in a safe and and appropriate way. Uh, but but we have to we have to uh, give a bit more than we necessarily might want to in order to make a, a relationship the way that it it was supposed to be. And and sometimes we have to humble ourselves and be the vulnerable party. Mm-hmm. Uh, to say that we were wrong or, or whatever that is. Yeah. I think that's a really strong one. And of course, just thinking about um, some of the four main words that we think about around this time in love, joy, 
peace, and hope, the things that God brings to us through Jesus, Mm -hmm. what are some ways to practice love, joy, peace, and hope this Advent and to teach that to your kids? And if you have teenagers, this is a great way to, you know, invite them around the table and say, hey, what's what's a way we could practice love together this Christmas? What's yeah. a way that we could practice joy as a family or peace or hope and invite them into the discovering what that is? Yeah. Oftentimes that's a better approach than just kind of mandating, here's how we're going to practice joy right, uh, this right. Christmas. Invite yeah. them into the journey of discovering what that means for the family together. Uh, could be really great. Um, I know this isn't a part of our notes, but maybe I just wonder if a great way to kind of wrap this time up is just by praying for yeah. our families. And so, Pastor Isaac, would you kind of close us in, in prayer and, yeah. and we'll finish? Yeah, absolutely. We have some resources we want to share after we pray with you, uh, and then we'll go on. Yeah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your love. We're, we're so grateful uh, for this opportunity to be together. This is super fancy. Pastor Tom and I are in an office and and parents are listening to this doing, we don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> and so we just thank you for this thank gift. You thank you for the gift of being able to do this thing uh, together, to doing life together and, and growing and challenging one another. Uh, Lord, our desire this season is that we would honor you in the way that we live our lives, in the choices that we make, in the conversations that we are engaged in. Our desire is that our kids and our teens uh, would learn uh, more and more about you, that they would love you, and that they would serve you all the days of their life, today and every day. And so we lay our families at your feet, Mm -hmm. uh, entrusting them to your care, knowing that you are the God who is walking with us as we try to parent and, uh, and grow with you. And you are walking with each of our children as they are trying to grow with you and live the way that you have created them to live. And so we are Uh, laying our lives and and our children at your feet and trusting them to your care. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And with that, um, Pastor Isaac, will you share just a couple resources uh, for us as we kind of close here? Yeah. So so several quick ones. Uh, You know, we've got the the book, A Thrill of Hope. There's a a one that can be for teens and adults. Uh, It's the more boring cover. Uh, and then you have the, the kids book mm-hmm. that was written specifically. It does have elementary students in mind, but uh, we're reading it with my three-year-old and my six-year-old, and they're both really enjoying um, this book. And, and uh, both of those have a piece that you read every single day. Uh, you start on December 2nd, so uh, that's actually we're on uh, December 5th now, so a few days ago you would have started, but you can catch up. And, and read that book together each night. Each We had to do one at lunch the other day, one in the evening. We did one at breakfast just every day, kind of called for a different thing. And so that's been a really good thing. There's a couple of videos that I really like. Uh, one of them is called, um, oh, it's from What's in, uh, What's in the Bible with Buck Denver. Uh, and it's Why Do We Call It Christmas? And that's a puppet-based one that, that I really like where they're coming from. And then a really good, video. It's about, it's about 50, 55 minutes long. Um, it's the Veggie Tales about St. Nicholas. And what I really love about it is they kind of, they tell the true-ish, I don't know how many details are exact, mm-hmm. about St. Nicholas and um, kind of walk through where that comes from. And that's a great way to talk to your kids about Santa or just to talk about uh, giving. And, and uh, he, he was changed uh, by the love of God that he saw in his parents and and so then decided to continue to live that kind of a way in giving to others. And we actually used that uh, video. I referenced it earlier. We use that to help our boys recognize that there are, there are kids and families that are less fortunate uh, than us. So those are a couple um, that, we, that we've really appreciated um, using. We're also going to be, for kids, uh, on Wednesday nights the, on the 12th and the 19th, We'll be doing different activities. They're going to get to take pictures, like uh, dress up as Bible characters and take pictures that will be displayed and then create different uh, Advent wreaths and and ornaments and different things like that. Just different ways to engage and continue the conversation of of why we have this season and what's important about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we uh, hope you enjoyed this time and it was helpful to you. Uh, If you'd like to comment or send us a comment, um, my email is tcraig at olathawestside.org. And Pastor Isaac, 
It's the letter I and then Miller at OlathaWestside.org or you can find us on Twitter, Snapchat, I don't have Snapchat, Facebook and other social media platforms. Yeah. And I guess the last thing for us to say is Merry Christmas.